Here we go again, Celebrity MasterChef, the toughest cookery competition on television. It's a new day and the nerves are kicking in again. They may be famous in their own world, but now they've got to prove how good they are in the kitchen. I'm elated to still be here. I can't quite believe it. I don't know what they've got in store for us today. Ah! We've got singers, actors, dancers. But as long as they can cook better than I could dance, we'll be fine. The MasterChef heats continue. Last time, the celebrities had their first taste of the competition. I am not enjoying this one bit. The flavours are amazing. TV presenter Yvette Fielding gave her all, but it wasn't enough to prevent her from being sent home. Now the remaining four are back to fight for a place in the semi-finals. It's going to get tougher. The standards are probably going to get higher, but I'll keep trying my best. I've definitely improved as a cook. If I can style it out a little bit longer, then I've got a chance. I don't have a strategy. I've been ringing my mother a lot. I'm just trying to immerse myself as much as I can in the experience of it and hoping that that might work. I've got to stop panicking in the kitchen because all you see is things flying everywhere. Apron. Welcome back. This is the Relay Invention Test, and it's all about teamwork. You picked up aprons on the way in. Obviously, red aprons, red team. Blue aprons, blue team. Each team must produce a main course and a dessert. The first person to cook, they will hand the baton to the second person to cook, who will have another 30 minutes. When you hand over to your fellow cook, you will not be allowed to confer with each other. Oh, my goodness. And for the final 15 minutes, you'll come together to plate the two dishes up. Ladies and gentlemen, work out who's going first. If I don't want to go first, because yeah. I am not a cook. You want me to go first? Yeah. OK. Cake, right? Can you do dessert? Can you do dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't mind doing a dessert. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. All right, OK, I'll go first. I'll go first. Cherie's going first. Go Who's going first? Sarah's going first. Tish and Chesney, thanks very much. Off you go. <laughs> Remember, I don't know what I'm doing. This is so hard. Oh, my goodness. Why am I doing this again? <laughs> My worst nightmare, I think, would probably be chicken. I've never cooked chicken before, so I don't know timings. Ladies, reveal your main ingredients. <sighs> oh, flippin' heck. Your main course ingredient must contain chicken. Your dessert must contain pears. 30 minutes, this first stage. Let's cook. Off we go. Along with the chicken and pears, Sarah and Cherie can choose from a larder of ingredients. Oh, gosh. Including fennel, mushrooms, noodles, cream, and a wide range of herbs and spices. I'm screwed. I'm very screwed. What? Well, I'm going to roast the chicken. And then it's the dessert I'm a little bit more worried about. I'm delighted to be part of this Sarah. I think she's great. She comes across as quite a sort of nervous. But I think secretly she's pretty tough. 
And I think she knows her stuff. Where's your mind going with this? I'm just thinking something slightly oriental. Deep fry some chicken with some flavour in it. Szechuan chicken. Right. Yeah. And what are you going to serve that with? Um, some noodles. Do you know that sounds really nice to me? Yeah. And dessert? Dessert isn't my... Uh, Tish is doing dessert, isn't she? In the 30 seconds before you parted company, you worked <laughs> out she was doing the dessert. <laughs> yeah, cos I don't dessert. I'm not... My dessert's not really my forte, <laughs> unfortunately. So, so what's bothering you here? I think I might be OK, but it's just the time. It's the sheer panic and the time. What do you expect to find when you come back in for the last 15 minutes? I have not the foggiest. Maybe she's going to take over from this and make it better. What are you going to leave her with? A mess. <laughs> <laughs> I think my role in this partnership is quite clear. Sarah is petrified of puddings, so I'll take on the sweet. Sarah has started this test exactly the same way she started every other test. In a complete and utter blind panic. She's going to deep fry the chicken and she's going to serve that with noodles. That's fine. She's got some peppers sliced up and they're in the oven. Sweet. However, she hasn't made any attempt at starting dessert. That puts Tish under a lot of pressure. She's going to have to start the dessert from scratch. I just really hope that I am up to what she started. You've had 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then you swap over. I'm hoping that Cherie starts to make a cake because I have no idea about desserts. I wouldn't know what to do. How are you getting on? I don't know, really. I mean, I'm trying to think ahead now because, obviously, I put the chicken in. Whether it's going to be done in time, I don't know. I thought about poaching pears, but I've never poached them before, so I don't really want to try and do something that I really don't know how to do it. So I thought I would do a cake. How long does it take to roast the chicken? Probably about an hour and ten minutes. I don't know. Long. You're doubting yourself. You always doubt yourself, Sheree. Yeah. Think about what you're doing. Yeah. Looks like you got the right idea. Yeah. Leave a sign for Chesney. Yeah. If you want vegetables with it, leave a pile of vegetables. Yeah. That makes sense. Listen, I'll leave as much as I can and hopefully he gets it. Sheree is laying the foundation for Chesney to work with. She's got a roast chicken in the oven and that's roasting away merrily. She's making an adaptation of her apple cake. She's making a pear pudding. Oh, I just feel like I'm doing the same as the other day. This is just awful. What can I do? That's what I can do, so I'm going to do it. The issue for Chesney is she hasn't really done any accompaniments for the chicken or for the pear pudding. I have a lot of faith in Cherie. I really do. Oh, God. I know she will pull it out of the bag. It's got lumpy. I just hope that I can read through her signs. 20 minutes gone. In 10 minutes, you hand over. Do you plan to finish the main course yeah. before Tish comes in? Yeah. So that all she has to do is dessert? Yeah. How's she going to keep that warm? I might just put the uh, chicken in the oven. And the noodles? Well, the noodles are screwed, aren't they? You've got 60 seconds, then you're swapping over. Use this level of adrenaline in my life. Right, let's swap. Okay, done. Okay, where do I go? Where do I go? So I've roasted a chicken. Okay, I'm not sure it's going to be done on time. Oi, 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 oi. Just leave it in there. No, Oriental, Oriental. Think Oriental. How'd you go? Okay. How'd you go? Bye. <laughs> out. Just, I've left out. stuff out. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> Cheats! <laughs> right. Both teams cheating! Oh, my God! Why is that...? Oh, I've never used a deep fat fryer in my life. Chicken in. My chicken is not going to cook in time. I put a whole thing in there. You didn't! All right, OK. I've never made Szechuan chicken in my bloody life. Yeah, but at least you're being adventurous. You're doing something different. I'm thinking about what puddings to do. Please, please, just, just do a poached pear with star anise, because that will work really well with Szechuan chicken. I'm just going to do a crumble. 
This must be cakes. I hope Chesney does pick up on what I was trying to achieve, but in all honesty, I don't actually know what I'm trying to achieve. They probably just need to go in the oven at the right time. How long do you think they're going to take? Uh, about 15, 20 minutes, because they're quite small. So what, what do you think has been left for you? She's got a, a chicken in, which is amazing. That's great. I'll just leave that, because that's obviously going to take a while. So you've got 30 minutes, and you're gonna, the two of you are going to come together, and you're going to finish off the dishes with 15 minutes each? Yes. Right. Veggies. So that... I need to do some veggies. And a uh, little pear coulé. It's coulé, not coulé. 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 In your last round, you showed us you make beautiful food, which tastes incredible. So you have a job to do. OK, great. Go. Thank you. Go. Oh, I probably should have peeled there, actually. A pear pudding sounds like a lovely thing with custard. With a pear coolie, he's got lemons, some sugar and some pears. He's going to blend the whole lot together. Mm, raw pear puree. Baby food. I've already partially plated and started to present, so she must have some kind of idea of what I'm going with. Tish? Yes. What's going on? Well, um, I, she looks like she's got the first course well in hand. She's got the chicken in. She's done a, a noodle base, but unfortunately, I don't, I don't know anything about that sort of cooking. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on the pudding. Tell me what your pudding is. I'm going to do a crumble. What about something to go with your crumble? Custard, maybe. Do you make a good custard? I can have a go. <laughs> what are you going to add to the main course? Well, I'm going to stop this from being cold. And the way that I see the, 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 the best way of doing that would be maybe to... Uh... And make a broth. Make a broth. A chicken noodle yeah, broth. that's exactly what I had in mind. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, thanks. Can thanks. you prove what a genius MasterChef consistent you are by making custard and saving those noodles? All right. Uh... Tish is making a soft fruit and pear crumble. She stewed some fruit with some sugar, that's lovely. But she hasn't got the ingredients to properly make a crumble top. She's got no oats, she's got no brown sugar. That's going to be a horrible crumble top. And she knows that, but she's carrying on regardless. <laughs> My crumble looks disgusting. <laughs> Ten minutes gone. You have 20 minutes left until your partner comes in and helps or hinders, or something. I'm not sure what he's like with sauces and stuff like that, so hopefully he's made a gravy. Hopefully he's been a bit more inventive than I have. Cheers, and he's got some fennel and some carrots with some rosemary and garlic in the oven. He's making mushroom sauce to go with his chicken. He's made a pear puree, which he's going to put with the pudding. They're using bits and pieces from previous rounds to make their dishes up. Which is not a bad thing to do. It's just whether they actually work together. Last five minutes. Tish is now making a broth to soak the noodles in to make the whole thing hot. However, Tish hasn't looked at those chicken thighs, so they could be baking to cardboard in there. God damn. I don't know how to improve it. I haven't got the skill. Let's hope when Sarah comes in between them, they can rescue it. I hope the chicken's not going to get overcooked, though. <laughs> oh, I hope she knows it's in there. That looks delicious. Let's go. Let me out! Your partners are coming in for the final 15. Thank God. Hi! How are you doing? So, that was just sitting there kind of in a big lump. That's done. Oh! <laughs> are you all right with the pear? Yeah. OK, I'll crack on. OK, you crack on with that. The chicken has been deep fried. Tish stuck a fork into it and it was cooked. Sarah's come along, picked it up, and thrown it back in the deep fat fryer again. Working as a team. Jeez, please. Doesn't work if you don't work as a team and talk to each other. I'm not going to roast these. I think they're going to be nice and crunchy. Do you think? Yeah. 
I've made a little Kool-Aid kind of thing oh, wow, for, for the top of the cake. Custard. Shall right. I? Right. Well, we've got that now, so do we need it? I'll just do a custard anyway. What do you think? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> the breast looks beautiful, by the way. Does it? Lovely breast you got here, um, love. <laughs> thanks, love. It looks really lovely. They're working well together, and the dishes are looking OK. But right now, in the oven, are two pear puddings. No, they're not. Whack them up like, immediately. And both those pear puddings are quite a long way off being cooked in the middle. Tish has come in and actually rescued a stone-cold noodle dish and improved it by making it into a broth. Sarah's come in and thrown the broth away and turned it back into a cold noodle dish again. I'm going nuts! I'm going nuts! It would be easier if you spoke to each other. No, because she's doing her thing, I'm doing mine. She was working on your dish. I know, but I'm... And I'm you've just, just thrown the stock away. It was a noodle broth. Oh. Last two minutes. Probably won't come out now. <laughs> Whoa. Right. So it's slowly over. <laughs> I've never made anything like this before, babe. I wonder if you're tasting the foods you keep seasoning. <laughs> Time's up. Stop. <laughs> oh, God. That was so stressful. Holy moly. Oh, I hope it's OK. Yeah. Do you know what? I think we're good, because we've got that lovely fennel underneath. Oh, we'll soon find out, won't we? First up are Sarah and Tish. They've made twice deep-fried and oven-roasted Szechuan chicken on a bed of soft noodles and crispy peppers topped with a nest of deep-fried noodles. I'm so sorry I took your broth away. <laughs> well, no, it's OK. Have you, have you learned anything from it? Communication is very important. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible reaction. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Oh. Good God Almighty. Oh, well, there's sergeant and pepper all over it. You can't season without tasting. That's right. virtually inedible, those noodles. Oh, there is just a ton of salt and a ton of pepper in it. That much of Szechuan pepper has the effect of the sort of stuff that the dentist gives you to numb your gums. <laughs> so there's one side of my mouth that's copped the most pepper, is it started to throb and has now gone numb. <laughs> and the amount of salt on the noodles <laughs> is, is incredible. What about the presentation? <laughs> Look, um... <laughs> Right. <laughs> Your thrice cooked chicken, twice deep fried, <laughs> once oven baked, is actually still moist. Your noodles are way too salty, a few peppers around the outside. I don't know how much ambition it's really showing. If this had been in a broth mm. with some lovely vegetables running through it and a bit more chicken and less seasoning, it could have been a really nice dish. Okay. Could have been a really nice dish. Sorry. The broth was the best idea, and you got in and threw the broth away. Thank you for that. Tish has made their dessert, a pear and berry crumble served with custard. That's passable. Oh. It's sweet, it's very sharp because the blackberries are very, very sharp. I don't know whether you tasted them, <laughs> but when you put that creamy custard affair on the top, it actually mellows the whole thing out. That tastes OK. I like the intenseness of the berries and the pear and the textures of it, I think, are really, really good. But it's not even a crumble, it's just a sort of soggy top thing. My feeling, personally, on both these dishes is I'd like to see a little bit more ambition. Let's have a taste of it. Wow. Don't bother. Next up are Chesney and Cherie. For main course, They've made garlic and lemon roast chicken 
and rosemary roasted carrot, fennel and shallot served with a creamy mushroom sauce. What I really liked about today from both of you, you used things you'd cooked before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Vegetables, mushroom sauce, pear cake, apple cake became pear pudding. And I think it's good. The chicken's cooked really well, but what's marvellous about it, it's full of garlic, which is roasted heavily. Rosemary running all the way through it. It's really well seasoned. Your sauce tastes of mushroom and spice. There's a bit of warmth in the background. I like the freshness of the fennel underneath it. Does it need potatoes? I'm not quite sure. Mm. But as a dish and a starting point, an invention test, I'm pleased with it. Yay! <laughs> it doesn't look very good, but it tastes very good. Oh. <laughs> your, your chicken's moist, there's good seasoning on there. I love the flavour of rosemary running through it, absolutely. Love the sauce. Good work, guys. Brilliant. Good work. Thank you. Great. Their dessert is pear pudding, topped with pear coulis and strawberry, and served with custard. Oh, God. <laughs> Your pudding itself is a bit stodgy. Yeah. You taste the pear through it. The pear puree on top, I thought wasn't going to work, and I quite like it with that custard, because you get a little bit of lemon zing, you get a bit of sweetness, but you get a real taste of the pear across the top. But your pudding is too heavy. I really like that. Oh, wow. I really like I didn't that. think you did. It's, it's, it's stodgy in a good old-fashioned British stodgy pudding way. The pear, although not cooked all the way through, is a ripe pear, so it's beautifully sweet and it's juicy. I Thank think you, you need to brush up with a little bit of appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But fundamentally, there's not anything wrong with these two dishes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yay! Well done. Well done. I thought he was going to say to him, right? I absolutely loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Such a good challenge. We talked, you know, which I think obviously has shown it's really important. And it worked. So, yeah, I can't believe it. A good round. You now understand the importance of teamwork. At this stage of the competition, the good news is that nobody's going home. However, that could happen at any stage. May I suggest that you get a bit of rest, and when we see you next, you won't be cooking just for Greg and I. Thanks very much indeed. See you soon. Off you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> It's 9am and Cherie, Tish, Sarah and Chesney are heading out of the capital to face their most daunting outside challenge yet. Where do you think we're going? <laughs> Somewhere. Well, we're going to have to cook lots and lots of food, obviously. Yeah, yeah. and we're, we're kind of west of London, so maybe... Primary studios, maybe? Welcome to Legoland Windsor. It seems pretty quiet now. That's because they're gearing up for the opening of a new season. But this is a busy place. There are 300 permanent members of staff here. And today, you are preparing lunch for 120 of them. Two teams. Tish and Sarah, you're one team. Chesney and Cherie, you're the other team. You have got a huge amount of work to do. I suggest 
you get your dancing shoes on and get to it. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, boys. Four celebs all by themselves feeding over a hundred people. What fun! It's about planning and it's about teamwork. And our celebs are going to have to learn that fast. My first thoughts are, help me! The most people I've ever cooked for is my family. This is something else. It's like massive. Today, the teams will be working under the resort's executive chef, Dan Walsh. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Welcome to our kitchen here. We pride ourselves here on our quality of our food. We've got an extensive larder for you to choose from. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to have a look, come up with some ideas, and then we'll see what you've got. OK? Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for letting us invade. <gasps> Whoa. All right. So duck, fit duck salmon, chicken, chicken, salmon. Olives. Each celebrity pair will have two and a half hours to devise and cook 40 meat or fish and 20 vegetarian main courses. We could do a couscous, but it's, it's what you put with the couscous. As well as 60 desserts. Why don't we do baked, some nice baked apples with some brown sugar? Their larder includes chicken and duck breasts and salmon. Do you mind if I take salmon? No, no, take, no, take it. it. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. How about the, uh, We're going to do the chicken. Salmon. OK. Right, it's the curry. What would we need? Chicken. Okay, chicken. They also have a wide range of fruit and vegetables and a selection of dairy products. I'm a little bit nervous, you know, because uh, this is my kitchen and any food that comes out of here, you know, represents me. So uh, the pressure is on. Hi, guys. Have we uh, decided what we're doing now? I think so. I'm going to be having a go at a salmon in a puff pastry with mashed potatoes with leek, just uh, some broccoli. Sarah? Sarah what did you I'm going to do a mushroom cream concoction of penne. OK. And for dessert, with plum and apple pie with a vanilla cream. Very nice. Mm. So we need to work backwards because we've got lunch, serving lunch at 1.30, OK? And our timings need to be correct, OK? Good luck. Thank you. And uh, I'm here if, <laughs> I'm here if you need me, OK? Yeah, uh, I, okay. I need some mushrooms. <laughs> some mushrooms, we'll get some mushrooms for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What do I do now? What do I do now? OK, we've decided our menu. Yes, I think we have, Chef. Yes. yes. Yeah. What, what have we got? We're going to do a, uh, a curry with sweet potato and quite a chunky curry um, with rice. Okay. And then we're going to do vegetarian. Are we going to do a couscous <laughs> and served in an aubergine? And for dessert? We're going to do bread and butter pudding. All this lovely <laughs> bread here. <laughs> lovely. Custard, Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. All right. We need to get cracking now. Yeah, yeah. Lunch is at half past one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So make sure your timings are right. All right. And we don't want to be late. Thank you. Okay. I'd start dicing up your veg. Yeah. While you're waiting now. Continuing on from their great teamwork in the first challenge, Cherie and Chesney have already divided up the jobs for their main courses. I'm on chicken curry, so I'm literally chopping down the chicken. Hopefully, it'll all turn out tasty. It's going to be gorgeous, love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chesney is in charge of the vegetarian dish. Vegetarian food is very much on the Hawks household menu. I guess they can be a bit bland. Yeah. I hope that the aubergine is going to really uh, make a difference. We're going to char grill it, so that's going to really add some like flavour to it. I feel like this is going to take forever. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be crying in a minute. We've been here for 20 minutes and I've cut one pepper. <laughs> hey, John. Good day, you too. How are you doing? What's the plan? I'm making here um, a little couscous medley, which we're going to present inside um, char-grilled aubergine. That's your vegetarian option? Yes. And are you working at that speed because you've got six other people helping you, or what? <laughs> OK, here's the thing. I'm a guitar player. Yeah. I'm, I have a very sharp knife. If I start going very fast, yes. I'm going to chop my finger off. I know it. You haven't started cooking anything just yet? No, I know. <laughs> Does that mean that you are technically in the caca? We're slightly behind, I'd say, yeah, yeah. 
guys, I'd say push on. Yeah, yeah. Rice on, get it on quick. Yeah, Bread and now. butter pudding, get it done. Curry, move it. Thank you. Move it. The other team are also only just off the starting blocks. I absolutely <laughs> despise peeling. <laughs> Sarah is prepping the fruit for the apple and plum pie. I've got 30 odd bloody apples to peel. There's going to be peel flying everywhere. And Tish is attempting to make her own short crust pastry to cover 60 pie portions. This is ridiculous. These quantities are just insane. <laughs> I am the messiest cook you'll ever meet, honestly. The team of Tish and Sarah is as scary in here <gasps> as it was back in our MasterChef kitchen. Help! There's plenty of ability to work hard, but there's no self-belief. Desserts is not really my forte because I'm normally so full from having my main course. <laughs> no one teaches you how to peel, especially at this kind of level. <laughs> Guys, listen up. We've got one and a half hours of service, OK? We need to push on, OK? Make sure we get all our prep done. With time racing past, Cherie is ready to start frying the onions for her chicken curry. Massive. I'm going to cook the whole curry in there, which is pretty amazing. They've never seen ovens so big. They've never seen pots so big. Whilst Chesney has got his 20-litre pan of couscous on the go. That smells good. Smells really good. Yeah. How are you doing here, hon? I'm gonna get this on and then start yeah. that dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Chesney and Cherie, I have to say, I'm impressed. Because they've decided to put their foot down and really go for it. Just wanna get the uh, the sauce in here and then uh, crack on with that. They're already cooking, are they? Oh lord. Why didn't we just stick with apples? Why plums? How you doing, girls? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Tish and Sarah are a little bit worried that we're going to be behind time and there's still a lot of work to do. I've got to cut on my leeks and get them in and then I've got to do the whole of the salmon thing. We've got 120 people turning up at half past one who are expecting nice, good quality hot food. The main concern is they haven't even started the salmon on crude. John. Tish and Sarah. Hello. The look of seriousness upon your faces is extraordinary. Oh, absolutely petrified. So tell me, um, what's going with the salmon? We're going to do um, potato and leek uh, mixture. That sounds absolutely delicious. <laughs> We're using whole fillets and cook the whole yeah. fillets with. Yeah. With the, uh, taking the skin off. No. You're taking the skin off. You're taking the skin off. No, I don't want to take the skin off. You're taking the skin off. Oh, all right. Sarah has only just begun prepping her vegetarian main course. <laughs> I'm mushroomed up to my eyeballs. <laughs> that came out so wrong. <laughs> Keep your knife down. Keep your knife down. That's it. Whilst Tish is attempting to skin eight salmon fillets for the first time. There you go. Good. Good. Really pleased to have learned that. So that's one positive thing. Oh. Meanwhile, on the other team, Chesney is ready to char-grill the aubergine for their vegetarian main. And both their curry and couscous are coming together nicely. Cherie, it, it tastes lovely, that curry. Does it? Yeah. Good job. Chesney can now help out with the bread and butter pudding. I've been given a job. <laughs> I'm literally buttering bread now. But while everything seems to be going well on their team, the chef spotted a problem with the aubergines. We've had it in for 15 minutes. That's, that's not on timer. There's no time on that. Oh, shoot. I thought you had it on a timer. OK. Yeah, you don't want them to... Uh, have, have I overdone them? A tiny bit. I think you'll be all right. You wait, might be I was all right. waiting for a timer. Damn it. I'm worried that we've overdone the, the aubergines now. Really worried about that. Guys, listen up. We've got an hour to service, OK? Yes, Chef! Total panic, totally out of control. 
How's your aubergines? They were a little slightly almost overdone, but we're... Oh, we, no, they're beautiful. Out. They're good? Good, yeah. thank God. We got away with it then. Have you any idea how hungry it makes you when you have to build a model town? I'm sure, I'm yes. sure. With just one day before the resort throws open its doors to its annual two million visitors, it's all hands on deck to get the place looking ship shape. And divisional director Sue Kemp is expecting her hard-working staff to be well fed today. So when the park's closed over the winter months, the team are dedicated to cleaning, painting, refurbishing, maintaining all the rides, attractions. So it's a very, very busy time. Everybody has 30 minutes break for lunch. It's really important that during that time we give them something nutritious to eat. We work long hours, long days, and particularly when it's cold, we want, we want to make sure that they've had the right kind of food to eat. Time is running out to get all the prep done. <laughs> I think we might have enough cucumber. Right, I've got one half, so I'm just going to do it. Tish needs to get her skin salmon fillets topped with pesto sauce and butter. It's petrifying. Then sealed in puff pastry. We need to get this in the oven, yeah, because it's not going to be cooked in time. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. Good. Teammate Sarah has to finish the sauce base for her veggie pasta. It's too salty. It needs some more truffle oil. We're going to need to rectify that because that's going to be too salty. People aren't going to eat it. Great. Another salmon getting in. Oh. Running out of cream here. As part of the more organised team, Cherie's bread and butter pudding is ready for the oven. Smells good. And Chesney's finely diced roasted veg... Oh, that looks lovely. ..can be added to the couscous. I guess that needs a little more great. olive oil in there with yeah, it, Yeah, I think a lot more oil. Oh, man. I feel like we didn't have enough of the mix now. Maybe Too much couscous. Think. Here, Cherie. I have no more oil. Cherie is very, very much in charge. Yeah, I had to put loads of like, pepper, salt. OK, yeah, yeah. And Chesney is very pleased that she's there. Much better with the oil, much better. Yeah. Maybe a bit more pepper. Guys, 15 minutes. OK, 15 minutes to go. Even though they've been more frantic, Sarah's getting through the workload. Wow, it's hot. The mushroom and truffle pasta sauce is done. And her plum and apple pie filling is cooked. So Sarah, right. that looks yeah, amazing. That looks amazing. Oh, that looks amazing. Woo! Good stuff. Come on, team Tish, team party. How big are my serving dishes? Oh, I have to. But the stewed plum and apples need pastry tops. And uh, it's just breaking up, which means that our pies haven't got any lids, which is a bit of a disaster. It does appear that the team of Chesney and Cherie... Chesney? Yeah, I'm taking oh, this out. the rice? ..are doing better than the team of Sarah and Tish. I can't get the pastry dry. It's been in the fridge for ages. It's really, really stiff. This side of the kitchen, there's a buzz. I think they need to be a bit fuller. Yeah. You top it off and then I'll finish it. That side of the kitchen is the smell of terror. I'm still battling with this blooming pastry. I don't know how people do this job. It's manic. Five minutes, guys, five minutes. OK, let's start getting food out onto the hot plate. This is going to take forever. Just drop a load of rice in the sink. Right, Chesney? Yes. Garnish? Excellent. They're coming in. Oh, come on. I'm absolutely starving hungry. You've been waiting all morning to try something that the chefs have been cooking. Really excited about what we're going to have. Oh, 
I'm looking to be pleasantly surprised. Oh, you all right? This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. Team Tish and Sarah have made salmon and pesto en croute with char-grilled broccoli, leeks and potatoes. I think these aren't cooked. It's not, it's not too, it's raw. The potatoes don't feel like they're cooked enough. Their vegetarian main course is penne pasta with a mushroom and truffle cream sauce. Okay. Look at the state of us! I've just seen myself in the mirror! Team Cherie and Chesney have made a chicken and sweet potato curry served with rice and a cucumber and mint writer. Their vegetarian main course is char-grilled aubergine stuffed with a roasted vegetable couscous filling. It's now up to the 120 workers to decide which dishes they'd like to eat. Hello, sorry to keep you waiting. Chicken curry, anybody? There you go. Honestly, the chicken curry's way better. And broccoli for you? Yeah. Get it before you regret it. Nice tagline. <laughs> Oh, sorry, it's not on the plate very well. I have to work on my presentation. No worries. Aha! Hello. 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 How are you doing? Can I try a curry, please? You sure can. Of course. Thank you very much. There you go. Enjoy. There's a yogurt and mint sauce no. there. Cherie's chicken curry. Your food's popular. Yeah. It's very popular. And Tish's salmon on crude are both selling well. The salmon's really popular. I'm astonished and I'm delighted. Not many going for our vegetarian option here, love. But both Chesney and Sarah's vegetarian dishes... The pasta is delicious! ...need a harder sell. Would anybody please like to try some of my delicious mushroom pasta? Because we're running out of salmon. She is from Girls Aloud, you know. Thank you! <laughs> yes! We have a pasta. <laughs> There's some parmesan down there as well for you, my lovely. Hope you enjoy it. I chose the salmon with the leaky potatoes and the broccoli. It is absolutely delicious. It is really, really tasty. The salmon pie was really nicely cooked. The potatoes were a little bit hard, but probably because there's so many of us and they were trying to put so many people through. This salmon dish doesn't taste anywhere near as good as it looks, and I'm very, very disappointed. Bits of the broccoli are burnt, some of the potatoes are undercooked, the salmon's overcooked, and the whole thing needs a sauce. I went for the mushroom pasta. Sauce was really creamy, and the mushrooms came through really well. It's, yeah, divine, really. That pasta is really elegant. It's not sticking together at all. It's cooked perfectly. And the flavour of truffle on those mushrooms is inspired. That, to me, is restaurant-style pasta. I like that a lot. Whilst Sarah's pasta's a hit... Anybody for a vegetarian option, even on the side? Can I have a chicken curry, please? <laughs> Nobody's interested in Chesney's stuffed aubergines. There you go. Anybody for vegetarian option here? No, I'm going to go for curry. OK. Please, there you go. Can I have a stuffed aubergine, please? I love you. Yay! I love you. You sold one! Yes! <laughs> you sold one! We need more salmon. Could you watch it? Is there any more salmon? <laughs> You're waiting for salmon. Yeah. Salmon, salmon, salmon. <laughs> Anyone for pasta? <laughs> Just salmon. Yeah. Oh, please. Guys, there's plenty of stuffed aubergines over here. More curry. Anyone want curry? Here we go. We've got salmon. I'm safe. Would you like a stuffed aubergine? Yes, please. It hasn't been the most popular dish, but it's started to pick up. I think there's a lot of meat eaters in the crowd tonight. Curry is going like wildfire. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. The sauce is really nice, and the chicken's really tender. Yeah, really good. Very well cooked. Spice to right. Rice is perfect. It's brilliant. A decent curry, cooked really well, not a huge amount of spice. But I like the little yogurt sharp sauce on the side with the cucumber. The rice is nicely cooked, and those chicken bits are very, very moist. 
That's a job well done. Here we go. Lovely. Great, thank you. The aubergine's been cooked really well. The only thing I would say is that the couscous hasn't got a lot of flavour. I'm not a vegetarian, but that is very, very nice indeed. I would like a little bit more spice and maybe a little bit less salt. But, in reality, a decent lunch should you choose not to eat meat. Well done, guys, with the main course. Now it's time to uh, start thinking about getting the desserts out, OK? We need um, a serving thing for this, don't we? We do, and we need to portion it up as well. By the skin of their teeth, Tish and Sarah have cooked apple and plum pie served with vanilla cream. Look at this stage of pastry. It's a disgrace. Cherie and Chesney have made a classic bread and butter pudding with cream. I think we're ready. With a vanilla frothy cream, which is delicious. Bread and butter pudding with cream. Help yourself to the uh, frothy cream. Oh, bread and butter pudding, please. Would you like a little cream on your pudding there? There we go. Thank you. It's actually very, very nice. Uh, really, the really nice taste. I think it's absolutely on par with what we already have at the restaurant at the moment. So it's very nice. It's fantastic. It's really nice. It's really creamy. It's really good. Good texture. A little bit dull in flavour. It could have done with a little bit of cinnamon. Maybe a little bit of apricot jam across the top. Something to lift the flavour. There's more coming. Despite the way it looks, the girl's plum and apple pie is flying out. We're getting there. We're getting through it. We're getting through it. It's really, really nice. It's delicious. The combination of flavours is lovely. Okay. I really like desserts with fruit in. It's quite sharp in places, but I quite like that, so very tasty. I think the pastry on top was a little bit maybe too overdone, maybe, but other than that, yeah, but the actual flavours were really good. I'm impressed that Tish made pastry for this pie, but that fruit filling needs to be sweeter. You can't just rely upon fruit inside a pie. I really like the main courses. I'm a, I'm a little bit disappointed with the fruit. King size. <laughs> Thank you. Well, guys, service is over now. Effort. They've done extremely well today. 120 people is a big number. It was a little bit close for comfort, but we got the food out in the end and everyone seemed happy. The best team by far for me is Cherie and Chesney. Their presentation is not brilliant, but their food tastes great. It was brilliant. It just came together. I can't believe it. I felt a little bit bossy, though, <laughs> to poor Chesney. I just kept shouting, Chesney! Chesney! <laughs> Chesney! Who are them carrots? <laughs> so I hope he doesn't hate me, because I think I just go into mum mode. Oh, I had a ball today. I had an absolute blast. People seem to be really enjoying it. It was pretty crazy in there. There's a lot of heat in that kitchen. I think that Tish and Sarah have the makings of good cooks, but they need to get the detail right. I can't believe we cooked for that many people today at all. It's outstanding. I'm really, really proud of us, all of us. It's fantastic. It was great. What an experience. That was really hard graft in that kitchen today for all four of them, and they come out of this with real credit. Right now, I can't call it. These four are going to have to fight it out to find out who becomes semi-finalists. After two days of competition, 
These four celebrity cooks will now face the challenge to decide who stays in the competition. Two of them will be going home. I would fall off my chair if I got through to the semi-finals. It would be the funniest thing ever. My gasp would be flabbered. <laughs> How am I feeling today? What does this face look like? <laughs> oh, I'd love to go through. <laughs> but regardless, it's been amazing. I'm feeling a little bit tense. I just want to get in there and start. Morning, boys. Morning. Hello, mate. Morning. It's really good to see you back here in the MasterChef kitchen, and it reminds me of all the hard work you've put in so far. The last couple of tests have been about teamwork. Today's test is very much about you as an individual. And you have got a cook to impress. Not just John and me, but three MasterChef finalists and champions. Sophie Thompson, Emma Kennedy, and Wayne Sleep. Those guests understand the pressure of the MasterChef kitchen. And they will be a little bit lenient, but at the same time, they have high expectations. Your two courses, four plates of each course, your main course in one hour, your dessert 15 minutes later. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this, there'll be two semi-finalists, but that means two of you are going home. Let's cook. It is tough. They're going to have to get their timing absolutely bang on if they want to deliver. They're going to have to be tactical, very, very clever, but at the same time deliver food that you and I are impressed by. You can't but notice that Cherie could be a really good cook. She delivers food that you want to eat. It's really well flavoured. It's well thought out. She needs a bit of confidence and a tiny touch of finesse. A sparkle. Now, I get really nervous about cooking my own food. However, I'm really going to try this time to, you know, put the negativity behind me. I know my dish is tasty. Fingers crossed it comes out OK and on time. <laughs> What are you making, Cherie? I'm doing chicken with an Asian five spice, pak choy and a sweet potato and spring onion mash. Dessert? My husband's favourite, sticky toffee pudding with a creme anglaise. And what's the rum for? Putting the pudding to get you drunk so you like it. <laughs> You're mixing continents here, aren't you? I am, I am. But, I mean, after living in Australia for the last three years, this is the sort of food I like to eat. You don't seem like a, a cream anglais type of girl. You seem more like a custard girl. I'm trying to be a bit, little bit fancier and do stuff that I wouldn't do at home. I would probably just make custard, but, you know, I'm going to try and do something a bit different. You'd like a semi-final place, would you, mate? Why not? You know, I'm here. I've given it my all. You know, I want to make my kids proud and, you know, hopefully learn even more from you two lovely boys. I like Cherie's menu. It sounds a little bit safe, but if she pulls it off and it's all done really, really well, it could be delicious. What disturbs me slightly about the chicken with Asian vegetables is the addition of a sweet potato mash, because that's not Asian. That's not fine. I'm all for fusion, not confusion. I'm very happy about Cherie's sticky toffee pudding, because that's a real crowd pleaser. There's not a lot that can go wrong with it, as long as she gets her creme anglaise, her fine custard right. Much went in there. <laughs> Do 
Chesney's invention tests have been a little iffy. However, when we'd let him cook his own food, John, it's been outstanding. Today he's had a chance to practice. Will he blow us away again? I have definitely managed to get more right than I certainly, myself, would ever have imagined. I feel remarkably zen today. Or at least I'm trying to tell myself, relax, breathe. It's all going to be fine. You have got an amazing amount of seafood. I, I've got half the Atlantic Ocean here, haven't I? What are you going to cook for us? I'm going to make a, a fish stew. Like, nice, hearty, rustic fish stew. From where? where? Where is its origin? It comes from my love of fish, my dad. My dad loves fish. When he was cooking for us, it was mackerel and stir-fry. And dessert is? A dessert is a lemon posset with a, a citrus salad. In the last couple of tasks, you've enjoyed being bossed around by Cherie. I love being bossed around by Cherie. But how does it feel then now being on your own again? Well, Cherie is only there, so she can still boss me around. But I am happy to be on my own. I'm doing my own thing now. Have you timed this? If, well, no, not really. You haven't, have you? No, I know. You've got loads to do, Chester. Yeah, I have. I'm getting on with it. Thank you, boys. I like Chesney's menu, and he's being bold and brave. I hope he's not being foolish, because he's got a lot of work to do. There is a ton of fish to prepare over there. I think the lemon posset with a citrus salad is genius. Come on, you lovely posset, you. I love the sound of that. I'd like a little bit of texture. I'd like a bit of biscuit. You do have to stand by this, though, because the cream really goes... However, if Chesney gets this right and he gets it out on time, it could be very, very good indeed. 30 minutes gone. Half an hour gone. Tish has been steadily working her way through the competition. But that poached pear was a glimmer of basic, simple genius. Now what we need to see is something really special emerge. Having worked as a team on the last couple of challenges, you do suddenly feel the weight of responsibility being back on your own. <sighs> what have I forgotten? You can't push the responsibility onto somebody else. Don't film it. Don't film it. You just have to get on with it, don't you? What are you making? I'm making lamb cutlets with a herb, mustard and breadcrumb crust with a celeriac dauphinoise. Serving that with anything else? Braised cavalanero. Pudding? It's just a lovely chocolate pudding with some raspberries and mascarpone. What could go wrong with these two dishes? The timing on the chocolate, if I get it wrong, it either turns into a really nasty puddle or it's rock solid. Why are these two dishes? Are these special for you in any way? Oh, well, I mean, if I was going to cook for a big Sunday roast or something, I'd probably go for a leg of lamb and my family are sheep farmers. Are they? As well, yep, down in Kent. What about a semi-final place? It's been such a steep learning curve. I just, you know, for it to continue would be extraordinary. Thanks, Tish. Thank Good luck, you. Tish. Thank, Thank you. you. I love the idea of Tish's herb-crusted rack of lamb with celeriac dauphin wells. Done properly, it's a heavenly dish. But if she doesn't cook the lamb, then that dish is finished. Because raw lamb is just unacceptable. What's more unacceptable is raw potato and celeriac dauphin wells. Oh, so done. I want a lovely, light, fluffy chocolate pudding. Serve it with mascarpone and some raspberries. It's not demonstrating a huge amount of skill, but it could be delicious. Jeez. I can't stop shaking. The pressure. The way in which Sarah works... Ow! ..is nothing short of chaotic. It's hot. Today, I want to see a settled Sarah <sighs> who delivers really tasty food. But I've got to say, it needs to be smartened up. However, her pasta with the truffle in the canteen was superb. If she can keep that going, John, she could make a semi-final. Please taste nice. Please taste nice. 
honestly, I just I couldn't sleep for thinking about what to do first. It's balsamic. I can do it. It's whether I can do it in the time. So we'll have to see. Getting there. Good luck to me. Why did I pick this recipe? I have no idea. You're stressed again, aren't you? Yeah. What's yeah. happening? I'm trying to tie my roulard together. <sighs> um, it's going OK, I think. So, what are you going to make for us? This is a turkey roulade with a red pepper sauce from basil with parma ham. I am serving it with frosted green beans, polenta chips and sweet potato chips. What's <laughs> your big fear here? Holding these bad boys together and getting them cooked through. I am going to sear it first and then I'm going to bang it in the oven. And pray to God it's ready in time. Tell us what's for dessert. For dessert, we have sticky pears in a ginger sauce. Your two dishes sound wonderful. Let's hope it goes all right, then. Are you finding this competition a little too difficult? Um, when I'm not panicking, I'm all right. Main course, we've got turkey and ham with a red pepper sauce. My concern is the outside of that turkey and ham will be cooked and the inside may not be cooked enough. Sarah's dessert sounds quite simple in terms of technique. So its flavours and textures have got to be perfect. Ginger and pear could work. It depends in what combination. Seven minutes to go. It's finishing t touches now. I've kind of prepared everything, so hopefully. <laughs> Last year's Celebrity MasterChef winner was actor Sophie Thompson. This is the one where you know you've got to do the two dishes. I remember I did a chocolate pudding that I forgot to put the eggs in. John just looked and he went, what's happened to pudding, Soph? That was my biggest blunder. So be methodical and don't panic and get in a flap like me. Author and actor Emma Kennedy was the Celebrity MasterChef champion in 2012. So this round was probably one of my worst rounds. I'd never cooked a duck breast before. And then, of course, I forgot to let it rest. I just literally looked down and saw this doughnut of blood. It was absolutely disgusting. At this stage, it's about throwing down a gauntlet of intent and saying, do you know what, I'm taking this seriously and I want to progress. And against all the odds, dancer Wayne Sleep was also a finalist in 2014. It's bringing back everything. I did my Welsh rack of lamb, followed by chocolate fondant. I was so nervous, my hands were shaking. I put it down, and I think I danced my way out. Yabba, fondue, and pirouette, and you. <laughs> I think the thing you have to do is keep calm and cook on. Three minutes, Cherie, on your main course. OK. Ay, ay, ay. Cherie's main, five spice chicken with pak choy, sweet potato and soy dressing. I like the sound of that. Be interested to see how she incorporates the sweet potato and whether it goes with everything else that is in there. How many minutes? One. <gasps> okay. When we did ours, yeah. I put potatoes in an Asian dish. They have two, and yeah. I was told off for it. It's a good presentation, but you're going to be late. What else is going on that plate, Shree? Just a little bit of dressing and I'm done. Good, because we're over time now by two minutes. That's a very good-looking dish. But it's late. But it's late. Come on. Oh. 
Come on, Cherie. Yep. Is that the last bit? Yeah. Off you go, Ready? Cherie. Hello. Hello, Cherie. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are we? Really well. Oh, Thank you. Oh. OK, so you've got chicken that's marinated in an Asian five spice with a spring onion sweet potato mash. Mm. And it's got some pak choy and a soya sort of little garnish around the sides. Oh, Thank oh, you very yeah. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So well much. done. Thank you. Yeah. Looks amazing. It smells delicious. It really does smell heaven, doesn't it? The chicken is beautifully moist. Mm. I really like the, the sauce around the edge. Pat choy cooked well, but otherwise, my fears were uh, confirmed, I'm afraid. I don't think the sweet potato works. I like the dressing enormously. Mm. All the different flavours coming through of the ginger and the lemongrass combination is great, but I really feel that the sweet potato is overkill. I'm actually slightly loving the sweet potato. I'm thinking, who'd have mm. thought it? Is that your Greg Wallace, I like it dance? I'm eating and enjoying very much what I'm eating. And I was wrong about the sweet potato. That's a lovely dish. That chicken is moist, and the sweetness of the sweet potato with the saltiness of the soy is a lovely combo. I mean, lovely combo. It's completely fusion. She's drawn on her time in Australia and almost tastes Australia in it. Crunchy, crispy, delicious. Cherie, we've got 15 minutes to get your sticky toffee out. OK. All right? Yeah. They're a nice bunch, aren't they? Sticky toffee pudding, my favourite dessert of all time. Ready? Please be baked. The creme anglaise. Watch this scramble now. The creme anglaise needs to be thickened, it needs to be full of flavour with vanilla. People have come a cropper in this room with their custard. We'll wait and see if that happens again today. Oh, these are so hot. Careful, careful. Oh, it's not come out as neat as I'd like. They're too hot, though. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where's your urgency? Oh, I'm made up with them. Right, you've got 90 seconds. That is very well done. Thank you. And you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you very much. Well done. Oh, hello. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so we have a sticky toffee pudding with a creme anglaise. Enjoy. Thank you. It looks amazing. isn't it? It's divine. Oh, that is oh. a really good sticky toffee pudding. It's not just spongy, it feels so moist. Light. How did you do that? The sauce is not too thick and too sweet, because sometimes it can be far too sweet and icky. But there's a lightness to it, isn't there? I love the fact you're eating that with a knife and fork. Oh! <laughs> 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 I'm trying to save on the washing up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's not a bad effort. It's not the best one I've ever had, but it's not a bad effort. Its flavours are good. What I really like is the warmth of that rum in the back of my throat. That's lovely. The toffee sauce is a bit granulated, still a bit sugary, and then the creme anglaise should be thick enough that the whole thing comes together and sticks to it like glue. <sighs> I can't believe I did it all within time. Oh, I'm just so relieved. So relieved. Oh. Two minutes, Chesney, okay, please. Okay. There we go. Chesney's. We've got fish stew with peppered mayonnaise and crostini. 
of stew, I like that. Fish is very hard to do. It can easily be overdone. That's a fish feast, that is, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm going to be very interested to taste his peppered mayonnaise. I'm wondering if it's peppered as in red or oh. yellow pepper. Look at that, mate. I'll tell you what. OK. Fit for a king. Look Ooh. at that. Go. Good job. Thank you, boys. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you guys? Really Very good. Well, that that well. looks beautiful. Nice Thank little fish you. stew for you. We have a very hearty fish stew with a little lemon peppered mayo. Thank, Thank you, Chesley. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> it's very beautiful. I wish I could put plates like that together. It's truly elegant. The sauce is such a beautiful colour, isn't it? I can see little strands of saffron in there. And he hasn't overdone the fish, which is, is so clever. The mayonnaise is like the binding factor, isn't it? I like the um, mayonnaise with the peppers. It's delicious. He's clearly gone through a massive amount of effort. I think it's a good fish stew. I love his technical ability. He's made his own stock. He's made his own mayonnaise. All the seafood is cooked very, very well. You can taste individually each item. I love the headiness of that saffron. That mayonnaise, it's really tasty. Lemon posset with citrus salad. I love a posset. It's got a set, obviously. I don't think I've ever had a posset. But I'm really looking forward to it, and I love lemons. A posset, you feel like you should be wearing a ruff or a Elizabethan frock to eat a posset. Well done, mate. Go on, mate. All right, I'm off. Ooh. Oh, hello, oh. ladies oh, and gentlemen. That's elegant again. That looks pretty. Oh, very pretty. Yeah, thank you. OK, so we have uh, a nice little lemon posset with citrus salad dressing. All right, enjoy, you guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. 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 Well done. He's got presentation absolutely down, hasn't he? Mm. Both his plates have looked absolutely beautiful. Mm. This looks appetising, it smells wonderful, I'm looking forward to digging in. This takes me back to lemon curd mm. when I was about 12 mm. at my grand's and eating it out the jar. It's so rich and creamy. I can't believe he's got it to set like mm. that in the time they had. At first, I thought the base was a bit too creamy, but, of course, when you do it with the orange and the citrus and the mint, it's perfect. Mm. And I think it works brilliantly. Posset is now my new <laughs> favourite pudding. <laughs> Oh, that is lovely. That's firmer than I thought, which I really like. Almost getting like a mousse. And it's creamy, not too sweet, and it's got the right amount of sharpness. That's delicious. It's a great-looking dessert, I have to give you that. But for me, it's really creamy and really thick, and it's almost as if I'm eating lemon curd. Well, I'm glad that's done. Whew. Look at the state of me. My God, I've got fish slop all over me. It was pretty pressurised, actually, today. I felt like I was so up against the wire. I suddenly had these horrible nightmares of, like, serving up raw fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a bit of a pressurised moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tish's main, lamb cutlets with mustard and herb crust, celeriac dauphinoise and a braised cavallonero. It sounds delicious. Herb crust, I'd have it all over, everything. That sounds amazing. We can pick those up and gnaw at them, hopefully. Way, look at that. Right, ready? Can we yeah, go? Hang on. Go, go, go. Well done. That's Very so well done. exciting. I like that. Thanks, love. 
Oh, hello, hello. 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 Hi. Hi. These are lamb cutlets with a mustard and herb crust with celeriac dauphinoise and braised cavallonero. Hope you enjoy wait. it. Thank Can't you. wait to dig in. <laughs> Thank you. Sweet. I like the pink colour of the meat, actually. This is very up my street. I'll tell you what is worrying me, is that there's no sauce. That's very garlicky. It is very tasty. Mm. It's crumbly. My meat's done absolutely perfectly. And the celeriac is soft and tender. The celeriac dauphin was, is beautifully soft, then you are completely overpowered by an or a, a taste of almost raw garlic. I love it when garlic packs a punch and the crust was lovely and minty. It's very nice. Mm. Oh, so good. I believe this needs a little bit more sauce, a little bit more of the jus. And I'd also like to see that lamb, for my taste, cooked a little bit more. I think. That is a very well thought out, very traditional, lovely, lovely dish. And it's going to make for a hell of a judging job here because bit by bit they are all doing very, very well indeed. <laughs> it's so exciting, so exciting. Three minutes left. How are your puddings? Well, I'm worried about the puddings because usually they take 12 minutes and then a minute to stand. And they've been in now for nearly 15 and they're still looking soggy on the top. Yeah! Yeah! OK? OK. Chocolate pudding and mascarpone and crushed raspberries. So this should just slow down. Nothing's happening. Ah, well, it's probably um, a chocolate fondant. Yay! Yay! Good. Let's go. And the thing with the chocolate pudding or fondant is the fact that you must make it very liquidy and runny in the middle. It's a bit of a risk, but here we go. Wow! You know, this thing's singing to me. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Oh. Hi. Hello there. Wow. Oh my, oh, my God. oh, my golly. Oh, I know what this is. So this is a, it started off as a chocolate pot, then became a fondant, and I think I'm just going to call it a pudding. Looks uh -huh. fantastic. Fabulous. Bye. Yeah, I can't wait. It smells gorgeous. It does smell lovely. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's oozing, shall we? Oh. Oh, hello. We have ooze. Thank you. Thank you, Tish. Thank mm. you. Really? This is good. Oh, it's awesome, isn't it? These raspberries are fantastic mm. because they're chunky, and they're like a compote. This is perfect. Fight is on this year. Mm. Fight is on. I think that's absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'm not a fan of mascarpone with chocolate. Mascarpone is cheese. And it's cream cheese and chocolate. And it's all a bit sticky and thick. It looks really good, but I wouldn't eat the rest of it. Well, that's divided you and me, John, isn't it? Because I think that's absolutely lovely. all over. I feel worn out. I can't believe that cooking a main course in a pudding can make you feel so adrenalised. <sighs> this is hard work, isn't it? Mm, well, I'll tell you what, watching people cook like this, yes, it is. Whee! How's that? That's banging. Turkey roulades with a red pepper sauce. Mm, you guys scare me. Frosted green beans, polenta chips and paprika sweet potato wedges. Well, I'm looking forward to polenta chips. I've never had them before. It's not cooked. It's not... Right, get a fry pan on the stove, then. Right. 
Right, let's do this. The only thing I'm slightly worried by is she's got polenta chips and sweet potato wedges, so she's got double carbs. But, you know, if you like carbs, then You're laughing. bring it on. I knew I was up against it when I chose this recipe. Why? Right, you happy with the turkey? Yes. Let's do it. Two at a time? Otherwise... I don't know if I no. can... Take one, I'm take one. shaking, OK. See the mess? Hello. Oh. Hello. I think I'll start on this side first. Here you go. Thank wow. you, Sarah. That okay. looks fantastic, Sarah. What you have here is a roulade of turkey with parma ham and a red pepper sauce with some basil. What I call frosted green beans, which is basically toasted sesame seeds with spring onions and green beans. And also polenta chips with some sweet potato as well. Thank you very Cheers. much. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. It's so many ideas, and they're brilliant ideas. They're separated. I think they're all a bit separated to me. I feel they're not... It's Bring a party together. when no-one's really talking. Yeah, I a see. A little yeah. bit. Mm. Polenta chips. I love the way she's got a crispy coating on it. Mm. I think it just needs a bit of yeah. seasoning, doesn't it? Yeah, it needs Some a bit more in taste. In in there. Yeah, yeah. The main point of the turkey, the ham, and the pepper is a good idea. Everything else is, is slightly unusual and not cooked particularly well. She has got a dish up, but it's all a bit chaotic. And it doesn't taste very good. <sighs> You've got dessert to do. I know. You've got 15 minutes. Thank you for reminding me. The dessert, oh, this sounds lovely, doesn't it? Sticky ginger pears with mascarpone cream and flaked almonds. Oh, stop it. That's our finale. <laughs> Perfect. I'm officially the messiest cook in this planet. Let's go. Thanks, guys. Woo! This is oat cuisine. I'm exhausted. I'm absolutely exhausted. And that's just watching it. These are sticky ginger pears with a vanilla mascarpone cream with nuts and almonds, basically. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. My first bit of pear was cooked, but none of the rest is cooked at all. And I find the sauce just too sweet. Mine yeah. is actually quite soft. Well, you can see it. But I thought if, maybe if it had been peeled, that would have helped. It's a raw pear, and they've got the skin on them. The syrup around those pears is like cough medicine. Whoa! Oh, my God, never again. <sighs> that was tough. I feel like fainting now, though. <sighs> Does everyone feel like that? <sighs> Today's been a very good day. I knew we had some good cooks amongst these four. Three of them have really proved it. You and I both know that Sarah's time a master chef is up. A turkey roulade with the red peppers and the ham, a really nice idea, but the whole dish was chaotic. The way she worked today was chaotic. And as for the pears for dessert, the sauce was really, really strong with raw ginger. The pears weren't cooked, nor were they peeled. You and I agree? Sarah goes home. Chesney put in a huge amount of work. That fish stew was a good fish stew. You weren't too sure about the posse. I loved it. It was one of the best lemon desserts I've tasted, actually. It was beautiful. He just comes up with dish after dish of stunning food.
Cherie surprised me with the quality of her chicken, sweet potato and Asian sauce. I thought it was incredibly good. I like the sticky toffee pudding. Our three guests loved the sticky toffee. Loved it. So Cherie, I think, had a decent day. I hope I've done enough. This has been an amazing experience. So, yeah, whatever happens, happens. Tish is good. Lamb, crusted with the herbs. There were a couple of bits which were a bit overpowering. A little bit too much rosemary, maybe. A little bit too much red wine in the sauce. However, that chocolate put <laughs> was divine. <laughs> it just tasted like a luxurious chocolate drink to me. I have no idea whether I've done enough to stay in the competition. Time will tell. Who has the fight, the skill, the ability? Who's got the potential? Great day. And I think it's a real shame we've got to lose two of you. But that is the way our cookie crumbles, I'm afraid. Our first semi finalist. is Chesney. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Our second semi finalist. Is Cherie. Yeah. Well done! Well done, oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Sarah, Tish, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. But that was honestly, that was intense. <laughs> I didn't even think I was going to get this far. So you know, I'm just shocked. Wow. What an experience. It's just been a whirlwind couple of weeks. It's been fantastic. Welcome aboard. Um, oh, I love. You are right? Yeah, I am. I just can't believe it. Happy? Really happy. I'm really happy. Do you know what? I'd never, ever thought I'd see or hear the day that I was a MasterChef semi-finalist. I'm absolutely ecstatic, but I want to win it now. Why not? I've got this far, I can go all the way. <laughs> well done, semi finalists. Cheers. Amazing. Cheers. Well done, you. Next time, five new celebrities take on the challenge. Don't panic, it's all under control, yeah? Oh dear. Give me a knife. Give me a knife! Oh. <laughs> mm, baby. Yeah! <laughs>